What's up, magical humans? Welcome back to the Wizarding World. I'm Mia Magic, and we have a Libra full moon coming up this weekend. So I made a Libra new moon download six months ago. So if you want to check in on that, I think that it had some really good, beautiful little ritual ideas and inspiration. And the most important thing to recognize is that moons run in cycles. Obviously we know that, but six months ago when we were in Libra season and the Libra new moon occurred, whatever intentions you set during that time, whatever actions or intentions you put into motion, whatever energy you were really planting, the seeds you were planting in your life, now that we're in the full moon, those energies will have either come to fruition or the patterns and the things that you learned by those things not coming to fruition can come to completion. But basically what we're doing is closing or completing that six month cycle from Libra season, late September, October last year. This full moon is all about relationships and relationship patterns. Libra rules relationships. It's the only sign, I said this in my other video, it's the only sign that is represented by an inanimate object. It's the scales representing balance and justice in the world. Everything else is represented by twins or the water bearer or a lion, etc. The scales are the only inanimate object. So Libra is very much about harmony and balance and justice or fairness, but in the way that we relate to ourselves, to other people, to being in right relationship with the earth, to being in harmony with our planet, Mama Gaia, who gives us literally everything. We would have nothing. We would not even exist without her. And so this full moon is about witnessing, especially in the last six months, but you can use any term. It can be your entire life if you want, if you're just getting into using astrology for your intentions and to really support what you're doing with your life, like coming to completion with things or setting new intentions in motion. It doesn't really matter what the time frame is. It's just that you're witnessing relationships and how and what patterns that you utilize or that are alive inside of you that are ready to be laid to rest in relation to your relationships. So if that means with yourself that I did my group coaching program last night and one of the themes was for everyone to be invited into doing mirror work, whether that was in terms of loving your body, in terms of loving an autoimmune disease that your body has, in terms of accepting your beauty exactly as it is, whatever the case may be. But that was a really strong frequency in our call last night. And so it feels important to mention it here to you guys. If you have something in any relationship, whether it's in a relationship with a partner or with a friend or with a parent or with yourself that is not feeling good, how can you look inside and see what belief or what story or what limiting program is running inside of you that would attract that to you? I was talking to one of my sisters yesterday and she's calling in a man. And one of her big fears was that she's gonna show him all of herself and then he's gonna look at her and be like, oh, well, you're fucking crazy. And the only reason that that could be possible, and I share this code and this frequency and this challenge myself, the only way that that could be possible is if we ourselves have, or the only way that that would hurt or that someone's projection onto us saying you're crazy would really affect or impact us is if somewhere deep inside of us, we believe that they might be right. That maybe the way that we interact or the way that we engage is crazy or is psycho or is delusional or is any number of words that would describe a disempowering reaction or relationship to our emotions or the way that we express them in any given moment. So if you know that you are in your power, that you are good, you know who you are, you're safe, you're secure, you're confident in whatever way, and someone calls you crazy, you're gonna be like, okay, honey, I think you're the crazy one, bless your light, I gotta go, I don't have time for this. But if you're raging, or for me, when I'm just totally having a moment and I have my voice raised and I'm not speaking with conscious communication and I'm not being the version of myself that I know, I know I'm capable of being, I have plenty of tools to be, and he calls me crazy, of course that gets me upset because I know that I'm being crazy. I know that I'm acting from a wound, I'm acting from a trigger, I'm acting from a disempowered or victim state. I'm not acting from my highest self. 
So any of the pain points that you have in any of your relationships, again, with yourself, with a partner, with a parent, with a friend, with the earth, with your job, with your coworkers, anything, the only way that someone's projection or opinion or thoughts about you can affect you is if deep down there's some part of you that either agrees with them or is totally afraid that they're right. And so this is a really beautiful opportunity. This full moon, full moons are all about completion, releasing, right? That the moon has come to the fullness of energy, the, all of the light, even especially one of the things that I love to do that I'm going to do this weekend is go out on a full moon hike because you can walk around at night in nature and it's dark outside, but there's enough light to see. Actually, even these couple of days leading up to it, last night we were sitting in the hot tub and you could see everywhere. It was totally bright enough to see. So that full moon illumination and lunation is all about having brought to light that from those six months or from your entire life, but having brought to light whatever the shadows or the pain points or the challenges or the patterns that you're ready to release and let go of into the light, the light of awareness. This is all about being able to see where the patterns, where the shadows, where the challenges exist so that then we can take the steps or do the work or the breath work or the coaching or the therapy or whatever it is or a ritual to fully release them. So what's coming through for me right now, I didn't plan on what I was going to say because I don't like to do that. I usually just, I'm a Gemini. So the archetype of the Gemini is the messenger of the gods. And so I like to just let the goddess speak through me and, and come up with the ritual right here, right now. So you're all, so y'all are getting it live. And what she's saying, what I'm really feeling, especially because this is our first full moon right after the spring equinox and the ritual that I did with my friends was to embody the darkness. So maybe you just make it a super simple, small ritual and it's one song where you embody your darkness or a particular pattern or a shameful belief that you have, whatever it is. For me, that is this disempowered conversation when I'm in contraction with my partner. It's the only space where I really feel like, wow, I am not being myself. I am not showing up as a queen. I am not being my goddess self. And so I want to just get into that pattern. What is it? What is, what is the shame? What is the fear? What is the icky, sticky emotion? or negative belief inside of me that is allowing me to behave like that? And how can I communicate with that shadow? How can I embody that shadow? How can I accept that shadow? How can I say to it, hey, instead of shoving you away and suppressing you and saying, fuck you and get away from me and I don't want you here and you're not welcome, all of that, I can say, hey, what's up? I see you. I see that there's something here for you. I see that you're having a challenge right now. I see that you're upset. I see that you need something. I see that you're asking me to support you in your healing. And goddess bless our shadows because they are the ultimate support of our healing. We wouldn't know what to heal without them. We wouldn't know where to go. Our shadows are our roadmap through our own healing. So you can embody the shadow. You could also write a letter to or from it. Say, I call upon this pattern. I call upon this shadow. I call upon my shame. I call upon my unworthiness. Please write to me, through me, anything I am meant to receive in this moment. That's my channeled writing practice. I always give that assignment to everybody. Or you can do the opposite and say, dear shadow, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate how much you've been trying to keep me safe. Another thing, ritual idea that is really great is sitting here, you sit and you put a pillow in front of you and then you put the energy of your shadow there. Whatever the pain point is, it can be unworthiness. It can be a belief that you're going to fail. It doesn't matter what the shadow is, but you put it on a pillow in front of you and then you can either, what I like to do is switch back and forth. So I'll sit here as myself and then I'll sit there as my shadow and then I'll sit here as myself and I'll sit there as my shadow. And I like to leave my phone with a voice memo recording and have a conversation between me and my shadow. So it would be like, Mia, hey shadow, I can really feel that you're here right now. So I'm just wondering, what do you need? What are you asking of me? Go and sit in the shadow's place. And, and really embody it. Feel into that energy. Does it have a color? Does it have a shape? Does it have a texture? Does it have maybe a, a physical embodiment? I've got a shadow that looks like Gollum, you know, like the precious, the precious. 
you know, all of our shadows look different. <laughs> one of my sisters who sometimes one of her shadows is binge eating, that's Maleficent. That's to just like bloodthirsty, I'm going to eat everything, you know? So you can make your shadow look, feel, sound, be like whatever you want, whatever comes up for you, whatever arises out of your subconscious. And you can sit there as that shadow or embodying that shadow and give it a voice and let it let you know what it needs or what it wants. And then you can re-listen to the voice note and the recording and really understand and journal about that. And you can ask it, how can I release you? Or how can I heal you? When, when you start to engage with it and, and even just saying, what do you need, is such a profound opening, such an invitation for that shadow, perhaps for the first time, to be welcome instead of being suppressed or shamed or judged. And so I find that that's a really powerful practice. Then also anything that you want to do, my partner and I just completed, we started on the Pisces new moon and we've been working through them day by day, seeing how new things come up. My partner and I just made relationship agreements. So that regards how we speak to each other when we're in conflict. Obviously that's the big thing for me because I can just get so fiery. I'm a dragon. You know what I'm saying? It's like better watch out. Thank the goddess. He's a phoenix. So if I ever torch him, he can just rise from the ashes. Goddess bless that man. I literally probably could not be with anybody else because I don't know anyone else who could handle me the way that he does. Bless him. But we sat down and made agreements. And so you can do this with yourself you can make your own personal constitution and stick to a few things that you know you can commit to, maybe three to five pillars. And it's like the Constitution of the United States, which isn't really doing much anymore, but that's another story. So you make your own constitution and you commit to it. And one of my teachers who gave me that assignment originally, she always said, you know, if you plant a bunch of blades of grass or some like little tiny beautiful sprouts and you plant them in this field and they start to grow up and then you let a bunch of cows out into the field, they're either gonna get trampled or they're gonna get munched on and they're just gonna be out of there. So what you do in order to protect those sprouts, what's growing inside of you, is you build a little fence or a little container. And that's what these constitutional pillars are of your reality, of your life. Bless Ali Bogard, thank you Ali. Such a great practice that has been one of the things that has stuck with me in my life since yoga teacher training. Pillars, constitutional pillars of your relationship with yourself. Maybe that's no critical thoughts or words about your body. So when you notice yourself being like, oh God, this is gross. I look uglier. I'm sickening. You go and you stand in the mirror. And what I like to do is I gaze with that part of my body, whether it's your breasts or your lower belly or your thighs or your ass or arm fat, I don't know, whatever it is. And you can gaze at that place the same as you would eye gaze holding a singular point and say, I love you. I love you. You're beautiful. You're perfect. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Until you really feel it. And it might bring up a lot of emotion. And if you can hold yourself in that, then even that process and that practice is moving forward into a new relationship with yourself. So again, this Libra full moon is all about coming to completion with the disempowering patterns in any relationship, including with yourself. And I highly recommend Libra is an air sign. So this is all about our mind, higher mind. And one of the things that's really important that we are so out of balance with in the world right now is the earth is the planet, is the way that we buy plastic. And guess what? Plastic doesn't just look like plastic. Things like this jacket, this polyester, goddess bless it, thank you, aloe, and I got this secondhand because I pretty much only buy secondhand clothing because I don't want to participate and contribute to fast fashion. And even though aloe things are so expensive, goddess bless them, this is a kind of a non sequitur, but things like this, even this fabric is not good for the planet. Making polyester is not good for the planet. So one of the things that I would invite you to look at is, especially if you're shopping or when you buy things, what is the why? Is it actually something you need? Is there a way you could get it more sustainably? Could you get it at the farmer's market? Could you make it yourself? One of the things that I love to do is make my own bitchin' sauce because I love bitchin' sauce. I can't help myself. I fucking love it. It's so delightful. And the majestic garlic dip, oh, and they just come in these little plastic tubs. And I, I got a 6'5 Viking for a man, so he could go through one of those in one sitting. For me, it'll last like a week, but still, 
we would be accumulating so much more plastic than we need to. So one of the things that we like to do is make our own bitchin' sauce. Put the curry, put the nutritional yeast, put the cocoa aminos, soak the nuts, order the nuts bulk online instead of buying something from a grocery store where they're in a plastic bag. There are so many things that we can do to be in a harmonious, right relationship with the earth that are really bare minimum. You don't have to grow all your own food. Last night we made salad with vegetables from the garden. It was so beautiful and special and sacred and amazing and important. And it doesn't have to be that. You don't have to grow all your own food, but just being more conscientious, like using things like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or OfferUp to buy your furniture. That's what I did for almost this whole house. I did get the bed custom made because it's crystal gridded and that was an important factor for me. I'm gonna be giving you guys a video all about conscious relationships. Got a video coming out with my man finally next week. Very excited about that. And I crystal gridded my bed. And so I ordered a special bed that is crystal gridded, but the wood is reclaimed. And so yes, the bed itself is new because it was made, but the wood is reclaimed. And so being as conscientious as we can about recycled materials and not using plastic and not contributing to the GDP or the gross domestic product of plastic clothing, even though this wouldn't be considered fast fashion because it's fancy yoga gear. It's like, okay, but the materials are the same as the fast fashion stuff. So if you can, finding those kinds of things secondhand, like I bought this jacket secondhand, if you can do that, if you can take small steps every day, making sure that you buy the peanut butter that's in the glass instead of the peanut butter that's in the plastic, making sure that you buy the sparkling water that's in the glass instead of the plastic, those choices make an impact. And people think, oh, well, that one's a little bit more expensive. Okay, well, it's worth it. Guess what? All of these resources, they come from the earth. So if we spend an extra dollar or an extra 78 cents on getting the sparkling water in glass instead of the one in plastic, we're showing the planet, we're showing the source of our resources, hey, I value you, you're important to me, you're worth 78 cents or a dollar or $2 or $5. There might be a larger discrepancy, it's still worth it because being in a more harmonious relationship with the earth will allow you to be a more harmonious participant in the universal frequency of balance of justice, because right now we are inflicting injustice upon our planet. She can't fight back, really. I mean, she does sometimes. She'll give us a tidal wave or an earthquake or wildfires, but the thing is, is that she suffers from those things too. Lots of plants die, and I don't think personally that she wants to have to fuck with us. You know, we're like a little bacteria on her skin, and y'all know what one does when one gets a rash you do something about it, you heal it, you put some herbs or some cream or something and you try and get rid of it. So we don't want the earth to want to get rid of us. So I hope that any of these ideas inspire you to come into a more harmonious balance and right relationship with yourself, with your psyche, with your shadows, with your patterns, with your pain, and with your partnerships, whether that's romantic or platonic. Any single person that you have any challenge or conflict, this would be a beautiful time to reconnect, to call them, to reach out, say, hey, what's up? I've been thinking about you. And to really just let the old ways that have been toxic or hurtful either within you or in a relationship with someone or something else, it's time to let that shit go. So I wish you all such a happy, happy full moon. So many blessings. I'm Mia Magic. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And welcome to the Wizarding World.